Are social media companies, the likes of Facebook, Twitter and YouTube, doing enough to regulate the internet? Well, the government says no and is tabling the online safety bill to require them to protect people from illegal content and legal but harmful content. Illegal content covers terrorism, child sexual abuse, drug dealing, people trafficking, money laundering, promoting suicide and so on. Everyone will welcome measures to clamp down on these things where they're happening. What about harmful content? That's defined as anything thought to have a significant adverse physical or psychological impact on someone of ordinary sensibilities. And this is where it gets a lot murkier because what falls into this category will be up to the government, the regulator Ofcom, and the companies themselves. Certain things, like pornography for example, we know will be caught. So accessing online porn will require age verification to keep it away from children, which is clearly a good thing. But that still leaves an enormous grey area. The online behemoths, big tech, they'll get to decide what should and shouldn't be allowed in crucial and controversial areas of debate. Where will this leave mainstream Christian beliefs on sexual ethics, gender, parenting? Well, with me now to navigate the complexities of the online safety bill is the Christian Institute's Head of Research, Dave Greatrix. Dave, thanks for speaking with me today. I've called this bill complex, but that doesn't really do it justice, does it? Because the reach of this bill is simply enormous. That's right. I mean, we're talking about unprecedented regulation, really, uh, of social media companies and of search uh, engine companies uh, online. We haven't seen anything like it. Um, uh, the government is claiming that we'll be a world lead uh, in, with this bill, and it's certainly uh, more far-reaching on the internet than anything we've seen so far. Well, well, let's start with the need for the bill because there are some good reasons for it. Let's can you just talk through the background. Sure. I mean, there have been concerns, growing concerns, I think, for a number of years uh, about uh, social media companies uh, and big tech, as it were, and. Uh, their failure really to uh, to address those concerns and uh, to regulate content that's been highly inappropriate. Uh, so there have been high profile examples even of, of live streaming of terrorist activity that, that has been shockingly slow to be taken down. Uh, so that's been one area of concern. Um, another area of concern has been perhaps more recently exposed by whistleblowers about the way algorithms are working. Uh, and driving particularly young people to, to pro-suicide content, yeah. for example. So concerns like that. Uh, and from our perspective, obviously, uh, we've had concerns about um, free speech on the internet and how uh, certain content promoting traditional Christian views has perhaps been very quick to be removed uh, by some of these companies. So there's certainly been concerns uh, and what the government is proposing to tackle in many areas, uh, we can really get behind. Sure, yeah. Um, so they're talking about you know, tackling the pro-suicide content, uh, about tackling terrorism content, child abuse content, um, uh, and all these issues. That but this is bring. illegal content already. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. So much activity. of this content is illegal already. Uh, so we welcome you know, stronger enforcement, uh, stronger uh, responsibility, the onus being put mm. on social media companies to take down uh, this illegal content, which we shouldn't be up there. We want them to stop it being up there at all, and certainly if it is up there, to take it down. So we can get behind all that. Um, but the problem is that the bill doesn't stop there. Yeah, so, let, so let's dive into the detail a little bit. Uh, um, I said in the introduction, legal talked about legal but harmful content. Now, they are words which aren't in the bill itself, but essentially that's what it amounts to. You have the illegal content and then you have this harmful content, which isn't illegal and therefore is legal but harmful. So just talk us through really what does legal but harmful actually mean? Who's deciding on what it is? Is it the government? Is it the companies? Ofcom's involved? Is it all three of them? How is this working? Yeah, well, it's a big question. Uh, as you said, it's a complex bill. So in terms of, of harmful, you've got two categories. You've got harmful to children and harmful to adults. And as you mentioned in your introduction, that will be assessed by a significant adverse impact. Now, the government will be specifying some areas of priority harmful content by regulations. Um, but beyond that, it's for the social media companies to apply that test of uh, adverse harm, uh, adverse impact, 
uh, to decide whether content is harmful. So the social media companies are applying the test. Just to explain briefly uh, for anyone who's not aware is that there will be certain kinds of activity which will be named in the bill. Yeah. And then there will be other ones when you talk about uh, being added by regulations, which will not be named specifically, but can be added on. A yeah, so not a specifically time. on the face of the bill, uh, but added by uh, statutory instrument, secondary legislation by the minister sure. subsequently. Uh, that does go through Parliament, but only very limited scrutiny, you know, perhaps only a 90 minute debate. So you're, you're talking about the onus on um, the social media companies? Yeah. Uh, so they'll be assessing uh, what they view as, as harmful. And then ultimately, as the regulator, Ofcom will be stepping in and making sure that social companies have applied the, that test, that harm test, appropriately. So yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all three, really. Um, government, in the first instance, setting priority content, social media companies assessing harm, and then Ofcom regulating that. So, so what does constitute legal but harmful content? Well, that's going to be somewhat in the eye of the beholder. And that's the real danger. It, it's the subjectivity uh, of, of harm uh, and how, how you measure that and, and who is looking at that. And you know, certain people with certain worldviews are going to view content as harmful that perhaps we wouldn't yeah. view as harmful. So we are concerned then uh, that uh, social media companies faced by potentially punitive fines up to 10% of their uh, global the revenue, ter revenue yeah. Yeah. Um, those fines could come from Ofcom. So in the face of those fines, they're going to want to be overzealous. They're going to be over-policing content. And we fear that where perhaps the Christian viewpoint on sexual ethics or on gender uh, is, uh, is, is challenged, is complained about, then social media companies will be taking that content down. Yeah, because getting real, I mean, those are the areas of Christian values which are already un under pressure. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, let's stick with the harm theme uh, for a moment because as well as this duty on the social media companies, the government has just in the last few days uh, said that it will include the Law Commission's recommendation for a new criminal offence uh, where a communication is deemed to be, and I'm quoting, likely to cause harm to a likely audience. So a harm-based yeah. offence. And, and uh, it says, the government has said that the old wording is ambiguous and the old wording being uh, grossly offensive, obscene, indecent. And it plans to use this new threshold of uh, psychological harm amounting to at least serious distress. Well, to me, that sounds, if anything, even, even more vague. So should we be worried about this? Yeah, we certainly should. I mean, it, the Law Commission is right uh, to identify some concerns about the existing law. Uh, there have been prosecutions uh, under the existing law we wouldn't want to have, have seen happen. Um, but I don't think the Law Commission's solution is, is going to necessarily be an improvement. Because one thing you have when offences have been on the statute book for a long time, so Malicious Communications Act uh, and uh, the Communications Act have been around for many years, people are used to using them. They understand them, they know where yeah. the thresholds are. When you've got a new, a new threshold, uh, assessing something as subjective as harm, there's always the potential for that, again, to be overused. Uh, so we're certainly concerned. And when you, uh, you see so much in today's culture of, uh, of people being uh, e easily offended, mm -hmm. uh, the, the threshold of distress, even serious distress, doesn't seem a very robust one. It seems like one that could uh, be met quite easily, really, in today's culture. So we'd be concerned about how that would be applied. So is there a risk, then, that this is really going to enshrine it cancel culture into law? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard it described as a turbocharged uh, cancel culture. Um, and uh, I think that that's, certainly runs that risk uh, with, with this formulation. I mean, the recurring theme that's um, picking up here is uh, subjective, vague, yep. unclear. There's a, there's a, there's a big, big grey area here to, for us to be yep. concerned about. And not just Christians, of course, for everyone right. to be concerned about. OK, well, let's, let's move on. Um, I think everyone watching will all know of uh, cases of um, legitimate Christian content. And we've touched on this a little bit. Legitimate Christian, uh, Christian content being taken down by big tech. So a uh, um, friend of the Institute, Peter Saunders, um, spoke on uh, um, transgender issues. Uh, that went up on YouTube and was taken down as being uh, harmful or offensive or, or whatever the rationale was. Um, 
and there's little opportunity to appeal those kind of decisions at, at the moment. So is this bill going to make that sort of situation better or is it is it going to make it worse? Is there a danger that what I can say online will be subjected to greater uh, restriction, greater regulation than what I could say you know, on the street or in, a, in an, another setting? Yeah, definitely. I mean, a refrain the government has been using uh, throughout its promotion of this bill is that what is illegal offline should be illegal online. But the, yet they're going further than that with the legal but harmful threshold. Because by definition, uh, those things are legal offline. And then they're going to be not illegal online, but regulated online and policed by social media companies. So it's certainly going to reach further. Now, there is within the bill also a free speech duty. And we perhaps had hopes that that free speech duty, when it was first announced, would address some of the issues with uh, Christian content being taken down unreasonably. Um, but the truth is that that free speech duty is nowhere near strong enough uh, to counteract the, the other duties on restricting content within the bill. Uh, so it's crafted purely in terms of having regard to the importance of free speech rather than something stronger like ensuring that free speech is upheld. Uh, so certainly we would like to see that free speech duty uh, much stronger uh, than its current formulation in the bill. It needs to be more of a, of a balance right. uh, between competing considerations, whereas it would be easy, I think, as the bill is drafted for free speech to be very much marginal to social media companies' consideration. So if we imagine this thing as a sort of a scale, on the one on the one side you've got quite a weighty duty on the social media companies, and on the other side there is some weight for, free, for uh, protecting free speech, but it just Not doesn't enough. do enough yeah. to balance out the duty on the other side, I see. Okay. Um, it's been in the news uh, recently, and I think many people uh, watching will have uh, read about the promises to bring in an age verification uh, process to stop uh, children accessing uh, pornography. Uh, I mean, you'll know uh, uh, that, of course, a law was passed to do exactly that back in 2017 by the Digital Economy Act, Act and, and, and that was repealed. But this is a Nonetheless, this is a, a positive step, isn't it? Albeit a late one. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think the, the repeal of that, that act actually is taking place in, in this, uh, this online safety bill. Um, but the government is proposing to, to replace it, essentially. And uh, the argument is, and I think it's fair enough, is that this, these new provisions would actually have a broader application uh, than the uh, Digital Economy Act because those provisions didn't apply in the same way to social media. Um, and the government initially uh, in applying the online safety bill just to social media seemed to be missing out commercial pornography websites that didn't have um, user to user uh, functionality. Um, but now they've announced that they will apply it to a broader spectrum of websites, mm -hmm. including commercial websites, which is good news. And there's a slight lack of detail around exactly what social media companies will be expected to do. Uh, the bill we're not expecting it to prescribe the exact mechanisms that social media companies will be using, um, but hopefully, uh, certainly the, the outcome will be there and we hope to see children protected from, from uh, pornography online. But just to underline the point, we haven't got the detail that's on that right. yet, so that's yeah. which is important for people to bear in mind. Okay, there's, there's one last thing I want to address, which is um, this was a draft bill. Uh, so it's been getting a lot of scrutiny mm -hmm. already because of the process uh, that's involved with that. So it's already been examined by a parliamentary joint committee, a House of Commons committee, and a petitions committee. They've all weighed on, uh, weighed in um, to give different recommendations and and raise different concerns and so on and so forth. Difficult question, I know, but could you briefly, uh, as briefly as possible, could you summarise their thoughts and what it might mean? Uh, for the bill when it uh, eventually gets tabled? Sure. Um, I mean, the committees uh, have made a range of different recommendations. Um, some positive and would distinctly improve the bill uh, and some not so much. Um, so, Give us an example. Yeah, so the, the, the DCMS committee, the Digital Culture, Media and Sport Committee, uh, has recommended uh, a stronger free speech provision, more of a balancing exercise that we were talking about before. So that, that would be a good thing. Um, but uh, 
at least a couple of the committees have also recommended really more of a, an identity politics focus to the bill, bringing in protected characteristics, right. uh, which uh, we think would would not be a good move. You talk that leads to people being given more protection Different based protection on particular space. characteristics about themselves. Yeah. So it it really damages the principle of equality before the law. Mm -hmm. um, so we wouldn't like to see uh, that kind of thing happen. But certainly the recommendations around free speech uh, are relatively positive. Good. And and we think that the bill may be tabled as early as next month in March. That's right. Um, the the minister Nadine Dorries uh, announced uh, just uh, in the in the Times over the of the weekend. Uh, that she'll be bringing it forward uh, yeah, next month. Okay, well, Dave, thanks uh, very much indeed. Well, as you'll have gathered, this is not only a very complex bill, but a fluid one too. There have been a flurry of announcements about it in recent days, and no doubt there will be more to come. As always, we will be monitoring developments and keep you informed. If you haven't yet joined the Christian Institute's mailing list, can I encourage you to do so at Christian org.uk. Well, all that remains is for me to say thank you to my guest, Dave Greaterex, Head of Research at the Christian Institute, and thank you to you for watching. Goodbye.